Well, my name is Itzo Vukovic. I'm associate professor here at Virginia Tech, and uh, this is the Linux Life of Orchestra student organization, and uh, basically um, it's an ensemble that explores the intersections between the technology and the arts, and the idea is that we want to teach little kids uh, through K-12 initiatives how to program their own instruments and use music as a catalyst for them to be interested in STEM. At the same time, we'll also try to teach undergrads and grads here to how they can cross-pollinate those kinds of areas as well. So. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Kelly Diaz. I'm here on behalf of Dining Services and Office of Sustainability. Um, there's basically three components to sustainable dining at Virginia Tech. Sustainability in what you eat, sustainability in where it goes, and sustainability in what you use. So to make sustainable dining at Virginia Tech a little bit more green, um, we suggest that people use the, compost, like, the reusable containers, which you can purchase at the dining halls, cuts back on styrofoam, our very own Ketlin Farm sources food directly to campus. It's located 15 miles away. And lastly, sustainability and where it goes, um, making sure that your right products go into whether the landfill, compostable, and recyclable containers. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so when most people think about mining engineering, they tend to think about coal, especially in Virginia. But actually, mining contributes to sustainable society in a lot of different ways. Uh, if you look at all the goods we use, at their base, they're either mined or farmed. Um, and so this includes everything that we also use in renewables, uh, in solar panels and windmills. All those base materials are typically mined. Gold, aluminum, steel, um, salt. So we've got a lot of things that are mined. And so basically, this presentation gives an overview of some of the research here at Virginia Tech. A lot of it is actually occupational safety and health research, mm -hmm. which contributes to sustainability because people have to be safe in a sustainable society, particularly the workers that are producing our guns. Uh, we also have a lot of environmental research, including an interdisciplinary program with eight other universities that looks at water and health and communities in Appalachia. And in particular, how coal mining has impacted Appalachia. And they've had some really interesting findings, including that in some of these rural communities, there are other problems that are contributing to pollution that mines can actually help with. That includes poor sewage, for instance. Um, a lot of these homes don't have a good sewage treatment plan. So, and also, we've really started to change our curriculum here in mining engineering. Uh, we want to make sure that our students understand that sustainability is a core piece of every engineering design that they attack as a mining engineer. Um, so we're, we've really started with our sophomores and we include sustainability now in every course that we teach. <laughs> <laughs> kind of feedback loop going on here. <laughs> so I'm Saul Halfon, um, and this is uh, the Theater Workshop in Science, Technology, and Society. And this is a collaborative uh, project between performance artists and uh, people in social sciences and humanities looking at uh, contemporary science and technology issues. Um, and we use performance and um, theater, dance, uh, song to uh, create dialogues, uh, public dialogues around science and technology issues. Um, and it's built on um, a uh, sort of uh, strong collaboration between, uh, again, performance folks, people from the humanities and social sciences, scientists and engineers who we gather together. Uh, we conduct a series of interviews, we do um, a series of workshops, and uh, we collect stories, we collect information, we spend a long time kind of doing uh, research, and then we gather all that together into performances, uh, which we present publicly, and then, uh, again, use that um, as, a, as a basis for producing public dialogues. Um, so. Okay. We 
Okay, my name is John Seminatori. I'm one of the graduate students at the Terrestrial Robotics Engineering and Controls Lab, or TREK Lab. And I'm here with a couple of the robots we develop and utilize in our lab. Uh, this here is Darwin. He's our oldest and littlest robot, four-time World Robot Soccer Champion. And uh, he was developed at Virginia Tech, but is now a commercial product that you can go out and buy and is open source. However, he is the least advanced robot in our lab. <laughs> um, many of our other robots now are being used in what's known as the DARPA Robotics Challenge, designed to help first responders and be able to send robots actually into the community and save people's lives. So if you come over to the Terrestrial Robotics Engineering Controls Lab in the Signature Engineering Building, you'll be able to see full-size humanoids in action and some of the most advanced robots in the world. Evaluation of a hand pump project. Mm -hmm. So people in this area were collecting water from open wells or seasonal rivers before, and 600 hand pumps were installed in northern Mozambique that looked like that. And we were looking at with households, how did their health, their income, their education for their children, how did these things change after the hand pumps were installed? Yeah, I spent, um, I did my PhD research here, so I spent 15 months between, and yeah. I was able to look at those cultural aspects and why maybe not everybody is using the handbook. Mm -hmm. And I found that like, this water source is a very social place for women. It's yes. a place where they congregate, they can be there without men, they can share information. Um, so they, they didn't want to lose all those social aspects. So while they were still getting some water from the beer, they continued to do laundry, mm -hmm. get water. Everyone continued to use these customer mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hi, my name is Martha Sullivan. I'm an adjunct professor in the School of Architecture and Design. Um, I run a class called Empty Bowls, so students in the school design and produce soup bowls over the course of a semester, and at the end of the semester we host a soup night event where we set out the bowls and invite the general public to buy tickets and we serve soup, and the public who comes gets to bring home an empty bowl with them as a reminder for all those who go hungry. And the money that we raise supports Micah's Backpack, which is a local organization that packs a backpack with a weekend's worth of food for children in Montgomery County who suffer from food insecurities. That's great. Thank you. So we're a center for power electronic systems, Virginia Tech, a big group that works uh, mostly in the power area. We do power conversion of any power level from uh, uh, watts to, to megawatts, basically. Uh, the ma major research is now focused on the uh, uh, energy conversion, and uh, we're now looking at the, the wide band gap technology as a promising technology for the future, for improvement in the future areas uh, in, like uh, IT industry, auto industry, and aerospace industry. Uh, this will basically make uh, our converters smaller, lighter, and hopefully cheaper. So then airplanes will be flying again and silicon carbide in the future. Uh, another thing is that we do a lot of uh, uh, assessments and a lot of analysis of the grid and how the grid in the future should look like, uh, basically addressing stability issues and also developing a lot of power conversion technologies that uh, will basically increase attractiveness and convenience and uh, improve the efficiency and basically uh, lower the, the overall cost of energy. Hey, so we're a student organization, Students for Clean Energy, and we're trying to work with the administration to get more renewable energy sources on campus. Um, and so basically what we've done is we've looked at us, uh, we've determined that solar is the most feasible for Blacksburg, and we're really trying to work with the administration to get more on campus and okay, so we're create we're the center for renewable energy and aerodynamic testing a big part of what we do is in the stability wind tunnel but we have other testing systems and we put different things in the stability wind tunnel for example wind turbine blades and this is a wind turbine blade right here we also have an acoustic test section so we test noise of wind turbine blades it's possible to put anything you want in the wind turbine in the wind tunnel so we test several different things, and we have different measurement systems in there, which measure lift and drag and velocities and noise. 
tell me your name again. I'm Daniel Cadell. Okay, Daniel, what am I doing here? Uh, this is a an app that simulates what a wind tunnel is like. Okay. And if you just draw on there. Uh, just draw anything? Just draw anything you want. Cool. And the green and the red are vorticity. Yep. So you, you hear about drafting, right, on, um, on trucks. Yes. So if you had a truck, this, I'm just going to do it like this. You know, here's a truck. And you had another one, say, here. Right. So would that would you have forces pulling this one in? I mean, yeah. how? So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the road in here. Okay. Uh, make it a little more realistic. Yeah. So you see that this one is is coming right into the nice clean flow. Yep. And there's a lot of drag uh, by having to kind of hit right into that. Right. Air. Right. Whereas this one, the air is already broken up. So by coming closer, it it's uh, much less drag because the pressure difference between the front and the back right. is much much lower.